But apart from that, what you see is everything that we're going to need for our fitting. So that is going to be happening tomorrow. We're going to be leaving at about seven o'clock to get to the job just before eight to give ourselves nine or ten hours on site to be able to fit this entire job in one day. Hi all, welcome. Ryan here from the London Craftsman. Today we are loading up for a job that we're going to be fitting tomorrow and this is the actual job that we're fitting tomorrow. It's a birch ply job, 3.5 long, it's 2.5 tall. We've got drawers, adjustable shelves, fixed shelves, hanging rails, five lower doors at the bottom, five upper doors. All completely oiled in a clear Osmo oil. We have already posted a video, hopefully, of construction by now. Um, so it takes us an average of two to three hours to fit or load a van up. And so we do have to do that day, day before. We've got a pretty um, large amount to do. This um, window seat is the only box that has been pre-assembled. So we need to make one, two, three, four, five, six carcasses, put the bearers in, fit all the carcasses together, put the adjustable shelves in and then drop the drawers in and the drawer cheeks and then hang doors, 10 doors all together and then the window seat. Then we've got all the trims. So we're aiming to do that all in one day. Let's see if um, we can pull it off. So van is all loaded now and it's all in nice and safe. You can see the bottom pack. We've just stacked everything in a whole pile. We've only taken up about 650 in width there, allowing a lot of space here for drawers and any other bits and pieces. Our trend gear is always in that corner. Well, we take it out at night so we don't leave our tools in the van, but then they just get rolled in and stacked into that corner. So two towers. It's covered up so any work that's leaning up against it doesn't get scratched. We've got our two Keta workbenches, but these are really, really good to work on on site, cutting trims, levels, hand saws. At the top with the high top, um, they've come with these little holes in the side of the van. So we've just cut up some timber and put some beams across and that allows us to get sheet material in, um, even up to 2.4 long, longer 2.5. So that is for the backings and trims mainly and anything that um, possibly is too big or long to go in here. We've managed it today. Pillows we've got lying around, we just shove those in nooks and crannies. We've strapped it down. There is a strap there that's going all the way across the whole pile, making sure that pile doesn't slide. We've got the hoover to hand. We're gonna have the choppy to hand in here but apart from that what you see is everything that we're going to need for our fitting so that is going to be happening tomorrow we're going to be leaving at about seven o'clock to get to the job just before eight to give ourselves nine or ten hours on site to be able to fit this entire job in one day okay so it's morning now it's about quarter past six got to leave at quarter past Quarter to seven. In half an hour, I've got to make sure my van starts because that's been having problems. I need to squirt some easy start in it to get it going. Don't know why. So, yeah, we've got a long job, job ahead of us. We've got about half an hour drive. We've got to get to Harringay, not far from the Tottenham ground from Watford. I suppose I'll see you then. So we're here now and we are ready to unload, already, already taken out the drawers and we've got this remaining, so doors, all the carcasses and some backing. So this is going to take us about an hour. Let me go and show you upstairs. Right, so let's go and have a look. Sheets down on the stairs. And here we go, this is the room. Pretty big, nice big space to work in, which is nice because it's a pain in the butt when the room is small, you're always walk, working around each other, getting in each other's way. This is the wall that the wardrobe's going up against. And we're just bringing pieces up now. We've done most of it. We've got our packers here. We've got all our cheeks for our drawers. Um, drawers, we've got small doors, big doors, lid for the window seat. We've got adjustable shelves and we're gonna just start laying up sides and tops and bottoms on the remaining spaces that we have. So when we do, we just make sure that you cover the walls. We use little rubber gloves in between our components and the walls. We've also put removable blankets down because this is a finished floor. They've just had it lacquered, sanded back and lacquered. Um, we put removable blankets down first and then another sheet on top, another hard, heavy duty sheet on top to stop the removable blankets moving. I'm gonna put another one here. Just make sure that you cover anywhere that you're working, just respect the customer's house. So we're gonna crack on, finish unloading the van, which is nearly finished. Another about 15 or so pieces. I'm gonna then crack on with the bearers over there 
And as you can see, we've got our drawings out, we've got all our specs in there, and plus we've got everything else that we might need. All our technical drawings are in there in case we need them. There we go. The bearers down, I'll start on the bearers. Sean will start doing the carcasses, and we'll meet in the middle. So let's see how we go. We've only got one day on this, it's quite a bit. 10 doors, window seat, six carcasses, adjustable shelves, hanging, trims all the way around, side panel, handles, and we're at about half past eight, so I better get cracking. Right, ready to roll now, we've got all our materials in, all set, all our tools are over here, all the boxes open, all the trend tool boxes, biscuits to fixings to brackets, hand tools, everything that we're gonna need. Sean's already put a little um, leveling pack over here, so we've got our levels, fixings, drills, we're gonna be using those packers in those bags, so that's the only thing that's gotta come over. So a mixture of 12s, um, 18s, 6s, shims, all that sort of stuff to bring our level up to 60 mil from the highest point. And that is the idea, because that's what we have left on our drawing. So as you can see here, 60 mil at the bottom, 60 mil at the top. It may vary as we've got a 40 mil difference between floor to ceiling and one side to the other, but we're starting 60 mil. Um, we don't really want it any less than 50 on the smallest, and then we'll just go up to whatever it is. So yeah, we don't want to be going from like 10 mil to uh, 60 mil if there's a 40 mil difference. So we'd rather have a bigger plinth than a small plinth. So Sean's ready to go. He's putting the biscuits in all of um, the sides, the adjustable shelf pegs, putting them to side. And then he's just gonna crack on and put one carcass together at a time. So, gonna crack on and do these bearers now. Okay, so I've marked out where my tape where thing is gonna be, where all the packers are gonna be. So, we look on this drawing, we've got a 40 mil gap in between the wall there and a 40 mil gap there. So what we've done is, that is from the wall, by the way, wall to wall. We've got our skirting to take into account and I knew it was only thin, about eight. So I've measured my skirt to skirt then I've taken all my carcasses into account. So I've added up all my carcasses and the remaining came to 62, which meant I divided that in half. 31 is from here to the start of my bearer. So these bearers here, they will start 31 mil from either end. And that is the overall size of all our carcasses. I've also worked out where all the joints are gonna be. So everywhere all the weight's gonna be transferred down. That is where our packers are gonna be. So one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, I've marked them all on there with masking tape. One, two, three, four, five. We've come in 35 mil from the back, allowing, so when we get our screw inside our carcass, remember, we've got a six mil backing, and we want our screw to come in 50 mil, so 56 mil to where our scoop screw is gonna be. So that line there is the start of our bearer. That's 35 mil in. So by the time we put our bearer in, we're just screwing dead into the center of that bearer. So same with the front, it's 556 um, to the front of the carcass. I wanna come in 50 mil to the start of the screw, so that's 506. That is where that um, line of screws is gonna be, but then I've got a bearer. I want to centralize that bearer. So we've got a line of 485 to the start of our bearer and the skirtings, and that's our reference line. So we've got our center lines from measuring out from wall to wall and working out all our uprights. And then we've got a skirt into the start, 35, and skirt into the start, 485. And these are where our pack is gonna be. So what I'm initially doing first is getting a, a set of 18s down with some 30 mil screws into the floorboards. I'm gonna do that on every single packer and then I could just start leveling up and just building up with my levels. But before I do that, I'm gonna just put a base packer down. All done now. And as you can see, we've leveled across. Perfect in the center there. And from front to back also perfect. So now it's very simple. I'm just gonna place those bearers on. Um, they're gonna be the exact length from this end of the bearer to the other end. They should be working out exactly right. I'm gonna screw them down with some 50s and then we're good to go. Sean's nearly finished the second large carcass. He's already done the first large carcass. And we're at half past nine at the moment, so we're doing really well for time. Hopefully another two or three hours, we'll have all the carcasses in and on the bearers because trims and pieces like that do take a long time. So let's go ahead and screw these down. There we go, bearers in. One in, and as you can see, it's lining up with the center of the packers at the bottom and in line with the pencil where these pencil marks are my exact marks. 
and so that's where they need to be positioned be pushed up against the skirting and yeah one in sean's just cracking on with that little corner unit now while i was um sorting out a few bits halfway through it i'm gonna get this one in now all right sean just made a great point and um he's talking about bearers versus sh um feet and i'm not a big fan of the adjustable feet i'm just a million miles away from that it's totally not us we just love this system because this is got to be 75 percent of the fixing strength of your whole entire wardrobe once you fix down to these bearers and then you fix all the units together they are so stiff and rigid there is nothing you have to do you don't have to get your arms underneath and adjust feet it is just there for you for the sake of one hour of getting those bearers down you've got plenty of fixings don't need to worry about fixing your carcass at the bottom and feet are just crap aren't they bearers 100 percent over feet in my opinion another plus side is once they're done and you get your carcasses on there's no leveling whatsoever is there no. no you literally just plonk them on and every carcass you put on after your bearers is going to be 100 percent level okay so we just got that little corner unit in nice and easy we're going to clamp that up in a moment but before we do just want to show you how easy it is to get these carcasses in though. So this big one is going in now. Sure. Two. 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 in just got three top boxes to make this one is already in oh that's a good point we can get the window seat in now now we've got the space so i might go ahead and shove that in before i put that unit in i've cut the hole out for the socket and to get that measurement i simply came from this carcass to the start and this carcass to the end i always allow about five mil just in case they need to take that socket out um, also i've measured from the bearer up to the socket but then we've allowed about 40 mil sometimes you get those sockets with um, a really chunky end and it doesn't go in if it's got a chunky end to the plug so we allow about 40 mil and this one is five mil above and let me just strike those lines on and jigsaw it from the top taking off all the arises afterwards both front and back cleaning up those arises and those edges nicely with 120 and 240 so yeah that is good to go in now so there we go there's another box in that one's already got its fixed panel on this is why it's protruding forward we've taken into account that Okay, so we're good to go. We're putting these up now. Um, so remember, for backings, we use 30 mil screws. We pre-drill with a 3 mil drill bit. And we put plenty in. We don't pin or glue. We just go straight in with screws. Don't like the idea of, um, of pins because they could be knocked loose. And for the carcasses, we use 50s. We've obviously got a biscuit slot in there. If you haven't seen the construction video, go and take a look at how we biscuit and how we pre-drill for these. For the biscuits, we've got two here, one there and one there. That locates it in the right position. We've also had the holes ready for us. So all we do is go through that hole and pre-drill through the side of the carcass to then have the screw ready and nip the screw up. So all three carcasses are ready to go. In. All in and they look superb. We need to just clamp it up one joint at a time using those clamps that we got down there using packers in between also so we got these little packers so we're not clamping onto the timber line them up nicely and we're just gonna put 30 mil screws in everywhere so the fixings for the top and the bottom carcasses will be through the top so you don't see them we didn't really care about the bottom because we got drawers um so we could probably just put four in there four four might even put six in here just to reinforce the center because it's over a meter well it's a meter wide so we're only at half past 11 there we go just so we're not lying 
half past 11 and all our carcasses are in so we got here just before eight three and a half hours to get the bearers down six carcasses made hole cut out for the window seat and all together so now it's going to take probably about an hour to connect them all up we can also get these draw cheeks in remember in the construction video i told you that draw cheeks are there to bring the draw in so it passes an open door if you don't have a draw cheek it won't open past your door so yeah we can do all the screwing up and the screwing down get one fixing into that corner one into that corner and that is all we're gonna need. Like I said before in the video, this is about 75% of the fixing strength going through to the bottom for the bearers because obviously it's anchored down into the floor now. So we're at five to 12 now. Taking us about 20 minutes or so just to screw them together. Sean's literally on the last one now, that joint there. But other than that, we've got all the edges completely flush all the way around. I've also fixed down into the bottom with six screws on the big one and four on the small one. I fixed into the side there. This isn't gonna get seen, so I just put plenty in. I used 30 mils for that and 40 mils into the bearers. The bearers are near enough 20 mil. And we've got 18 mil, so a 40 mil screw is perfect to go into those bearings for fixings. In the meanwhile, I'm just gonna start getting these draw cheeks in. This single door's hung off this corner here near the door. So we need one cheek over there. As you can see, we've got one set of runners on this side with no cheek. And the reason behind that is because there is no door open it opening from that corner. So we're having one cheek there and the rest have got two because there's a pair and a pair. So I'm gonna place those in. They're already pre-drills. Four holes, one, two, three, four. And um, yeah, they're just gonna go in, gonna place them in the right place, step them back 10 mil. Um, just like this, if you have a look here, we step this runner back 10 mil from the front, which means it just gives you a little bit more leeway. So if you're trying to make the, the drawer flush with the front of the carcass, then if you don't close the drawer properly, you leave it ajar by about two or three mil when you come to close the door it's going to touch the drawer so by allowing 10 more mils stepping that back that takes care of that so just remember if you've got two different types like this one and this one here so there's a drawer cheek there and there isn't one there just make sure the drawer runners are stepped back the same amount of distance from the front from the front of the carcass and that's what i'm going to do here i'm going to step these back 10 mil from the front of the carcass um i think i'm going to screw the runners onto the cheeks first before i get them in make my life a little bit um easier yeah, Sean's near enough finished there now. We're using 450 runners, side mounted from GTV. Uh, they're just a standard type, no soft clothes or anything like that. And um, I'm gonna split them apart. Make sure when you split them apart, you just do it away from any dust. But once they're in two pieces, the bigger part will go on the cheeks and the smaller part will go on the drawers. One of the most satisfying parts of the job are getting the adjustable shelves in. Makes it look a little bit more complete. The adjustables, we've left three holes, three holes of adjustment, and we put the pin dead in the center. Put one more to go there, and we've got the adjustables there. The bottom ones, we've just put on the top one, and if they want to make this any bigger, they can drop that shelf down all the way as far as a 200 mil from this fixed shelf. Go all split apart. So the holes are pre-drilled. Done in the workshop beforehand. We've got all our holes there. And as you can see, the carcass and the draw runner are flush, the bigger part. And this hole lines up. So I'm gonna simply put that screw in first. These were marked out and pre-marked with a braddle first. So we know these are absolutely spot on. So I know that every time I put a runner on, I'm gonna put this back one on first to make sure they're all exactly the same. This one's already done. Four screws in that one, four screws in that, just simply using some 20s and happy days. There we go, there's our four screws. So now that's on, I can simply just find out which one that is. That is top of B. So that's A carcass, the first one, that's B. So it's, as you can see, it's a left hand as well. So it's gonna go there on the inside. So there we go, there's our cheek in. As you can see, I've left a 10 mil gap there from the front of the carcass. I'm just gonna simply pre-drill these holes that have already been done in the workshop and put some 40 mil screws in. I got a little bit sidetracked. 
Um, I want to get this carcass fixed for Sean because he started getting out all the benches. Chops all ready to do the cross cuts and the plungy along with the auto hoover, trend hoover and the trend choppy, the 18 volt one. Um, because he wants to get, uh, get on with trims. Carcasses are all done now. The rest he can leave to me while he starts measuring up all the way around and gets them ready for me to then fit. So if you're looking for a way of fixing a carcass, um, like me, you forgot to get a fixing in place before you put the carcass in, or sometimes you just can't get a fixing bracket there in place because you just don't know where that carcass is gonna be. What we simply do is get a piece of MDF, like so, screw a bracket to it, along with some glue underneath. We then put that bracket up the top, like so, making sure it's not sticking out past the carcass. Draw those holes in, take it away, pre-drill with the STS, and we use a six mil drill bit, okay? Then we try and bang in a seven mil raw plug to make it nice and tight in those holes. We then get some mitre glue, this, the O3A that we use, and line that up. Remember, get your raw plug in the hole first. Line that up to where it was and glue this down, put plenty of glue on, and then within a couple of seconds, it will be stuck there in position like so. You could then just put your screw in through the bracket and into the wall, and that is your fixing. You have got a side panel going here, so you're not gonna notice it. There's no other easy methods to get a fixing in there um, because our drill just won't, well, we can fix into the wall there, but, but then we can't fix down. So the uh, method of gluing to the packer, or screwing to the packer, and then gluing down to the top is a good way around it. So that's what I'm gonna do there. Got a 40 mil gap over there, so all we're gonna do is just put an STS through near the 30 mil hinge hole, the pre-drilled hole for our fixing there, or our trim, shall I say. And then we're just gonna put a packer in there. So when we're ramming that screw in, um, we, can, we can just fill that void with a couple of spacers, a couple of MDF packers, nip that screw up, and this will not go anywhere. It'll be earthquake proof, won't it, Sean? Yeah. Sean loves trims, don't you, Sean? <laughs> it's your favorite. <laughs> your most favorite job <laughs> all right so just going over it what sean does first he cuts all the trims to length first so this one is quite long we haven't got a trim long enough to do three and a half meters so we're finding the halfway joint yeah, yeah. so you're doing the joint there in line with a door and so he's going to cut those to length where there is a joint there's already a round over okay so we're putting two round overs to just create a nice joint rather than a horrible saw cut not trying to hide it we're just going to make that joint nice along with the trims on the side the joint's probably going to be in line with the two doors okay so he's going to be cutting them all to length and then he can just go and take all his measurements and then start scribing them with the choppy or the plungy should i say all right i better go on with some work okay so i forgot to mention it's half past 12 now so Half the day is gone. We sort of go at about half five. We try and aim for about five, half five. We're near the A406, so we want to miss that traffic. That we will. But um, yeah, it's just trims and hanging doors, the lid for the window seat. Slip those drawers in. I just say just. It's not just. The trims probably take longer than putting the old carcasses together. So yeah, doing all right so far. All right, so cheeks in now, all complete, all 10 mil step back. Sean cut one of the trims for me, and it was absolutely superb. Nice tight fit up against these wonky floorboards. And they've just been fixed down through the top. Remember, they will get covered because there's draw fascias going in here. I'm on just screwing these runners onto the side of the drawers now. So just doing one drawer at a time. I'm gonna plonk them in the top first. I'm not gonna put the bottom ones in because we need to get these hinges on and adjust them. If we got this drawer in at the bottom, then we can't do any adjusting of that hinge or screw on. So they have to wait until the doors are completely on and we're happy that they are correct. There we go, one in, nice and easy, just went straight in. Uh, two man job for a bigger drawer, one person grabbing each end and a big enough gap for our fingers to get in, nice 25 mil parallel gap and that is the finish right there. Drawers in and we got that side trim in there and Sean decided to get that side trim in and that side trim and so then we can hang this door so he's just cracking on and just finishing that bottom trim off quite a few trims on this one one more to finish there and two at the top then we've got a side panel 
and then we've got a side piece there and a side piece there but i've already hinged that lid ready to go on we're using the gtv soft close hinges here so i've got 25 hinges to open and get ready and adjust to the center of all the adjustments and then i can then just start hinging all these doors get them screwed onto the doors ready to hang so i've split open uh enough for 25 hinges and I've adjusted them. So when they come, they generally don't come in the center here. So we adjust them to the center and we wind them all the way in so the plate is touching the hinge. That way we know they're all the same. And when we put them on, then we can just make our adjustments. What we do is we use these little rubber grommets on every door. We put one in each corner, top and bottom of all the doors. Then we just simply place our hinges in, two 20 mil screws, put the plate on, and that door is ready to hang. As you can tell, light is disappearing. We're at 2 p.m. on the dots right now, so we've got good progress. But, like I said before, the trims literally take up so much time and all the fiddly bits. So the carcasses went in by, I don't know, what was it, half 12 or something. And yeah, now all the tricky uh, little bits and pieces. Half 11. Half 11 carcasses? So we, got them all, we got them all in, but not fixed. Oh, right, and then another half an hour for fixing. Yeah, so 12, 12 we've got all in. Yeah, yeah, so Sean, obviously, is taking his time on the trims. We don't want to rush them. And they're all coming out perfect. So he's got one more to. Well, is that done? Yeah, yeah that's, done. that's done. That will go in there now. One, two, three, and a side panel. Oh, I'll keep counting. Still lots to go. Anyway, I'm going to start getting this lid on now. So we put some six mil packers on the top. I'm going to put the lid on edge, flap the hinges down, screw them on, and then remove the packers. And then it should be in the right place. And then we just adjust the height of the flap once it's down. Trims all the way in now at the bottom. I just put that one in, Sean cut that too, and it's looking really nice. So yeah, let's go and get this lid on. There is a side panel going on here, as you know, covering all the gaps up. And so there is the side panel just mocked up, and then we're gonna leave a three more gap. So we've got a three more spacer there, and then the lid will just butt up against there, okay? There we go, and this is what I mean. Three mil packer, 18 mil cheek, hinges are in, and the lid is on top of those six mil spacers. I've screwed them on now, two, two, and two. Just gonna remove those packers and drop it down, see what happens. So that's the window seats kind of done. We've got that consistent 21 mil gap for the cheek to go in and our three mil space. We've got the side trim in now, and that's all finished, the bottom trim in. All we need to do is scribe the remaining pieces. Remember, this lid was made out of one continuous piece, and we cut the lid to suit this box. So the grain will match the back. Sean's done a fabulous job on these trims. Look at that. Just got those two in, taking his time. Well, yeah, he has done all of them. I was gonna say I've done some, but no. I've sorted out that lid. I'm just scribing the back trim, which is done. I'm gonna glue that on in a moment, but yeah. We've only got that side panel to do, glue that trim down and then cut and glue that trim down. That is all the trims left. Then we're gonna aim on getting all the doors done. Yeah, it's looking nice. Let me just show you this. There we go. Flush with the front. So that's that back trim done. We can't do much about the height, um, but you don't notice it from here. Plus there's a cushion going on. We do need to leave a little bit of a gap for the door to open, otherwise the corner will hit the carcass. And we've got this remaining piece to go in here now. And yeah, we're just simply just gonna measure from the lid to this trim, cut it to length. And then for this, I'm simply just gonna take three or four measurements and um, transfer that onto the piece, then cut it with the, the plunge saw. Sean's on the last panel now, doing it in increments. That's the way we do it. We don't use a jigsaw or anything like that. We just mark on the overalls and then we just simply just go from line to line to line and cut it as we go. Um, I finished off all the doors so they've been hinged and all the rubber grommets are put in the corners and they're the smaller ones there so they're ready to go. And this is our technique. Sean's already got it um, put up. So we just use packers to go to the underside of the carcass. So by doing all the bottom doors first, when it comes to doing the top doors, we can then rest the top door on a three mil spacer on top of the lower doors. Right, we're at 10 past four now, and all the trims and panels are all done all the way around. We just managed to get this side panel in. There we go, all finished. Nicely scribed up against that back wall and up against the ceiling. And I managed to finish these trims also down the side. So we allowed a two or three mil gap there, the same at the back 
and then the same on the side. So we designed it so the lid just sits back up against the wall and yeah, nice little bit of storage in there for our chargers. So next thing we're gonna do, which is the last thing really, barring the handles, is getting these doors on. We've got 10 to do, so it can be a little bit slow sometimes when you get one on and you need to adjust it here and there, but yeah, maybe about another hour to get these doors on. Then, yeah, handles. And yeah, Sean's just stopped for the first time and it's four o'clock. Yeah. So he's been a soldier. This is my reward. <laughs> so before the light disappears, which it is in about half an hour, I'll just show you how we're hanging these doors. So if we make packers up to the underside of the carcass, because the door is the same size as this bottom carcass, as you can see, it's in line with the top. We put six mil packers in between the door and the carcass. One person holds the door at a 90 degree to the carcass and then somebody just pre-drills the hinge and puts those screws in it's as simple as that if i just remove these top and bottom and then these packers then in theory that should just close and be exactly where we want it to be there we go right it's five o'clock now we've got the sight lights on we can see a little bit more now got three doors on and they're looking really nice. They're lining up nicely. We've got our three more gaps. And yeah, it's gonna be probably another hour or so before we finish. Sean's packing up whilst I'll get these doors on. 20 to six and we've got eight of the doors on. So they're a little bit slow. Just got to adjust them as you go. So two more and we'll get the handles on. It's looking good. So we're all finished now. We started at eight o'clock and we finished at seven. So that is 11 hours on the go, literally non-stop, but we did it really tough with the way it came out. Have a little look round. So obviously you've got the drawers at the bottom, you've got an adjustable shelf on the adjustable pins, so that could be adjusted to any height. Hanging rail, upper section, adjustable shelf at the top, a little window seat over there, sorry about the light, but um, yeah, we are at seven o'clock in the winter. And another little section over there, all the same, but another little ditty section. Low doors. Upper doors, 10 doors in total. Managed to complete in 11 hours. I'm actually pretty chuffed about that. Um, I think it's come out really, really nice. Customers are happy, which is the main thing. So I'll go ahead and close these up. One. So there we go, all done. Hope you enjoyed this um, fitting as much as we did and plus the build of it. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe. We've also got a membership, so if you feel like we've done a good job, you've taken something away from it, you've enjoyed our content and the whole series that we've made, make sure you head over to the channel and hit the join button and become a member, that'd be brilliant. So I'm gonna leave it like that. It's been a long old day, 11 hours, wanna get home. We've missed the traffic now, which is great past seven o'clock. That's it. Take it easy. Have a great rest of the day. See you next Sunday.